Hello, I'm Bill Greer, President of Smart Recovery USA. And I'm Mark Ruth, the Executive Director of Smart Recovery USA. On behalf of our past, present, and future smart leadership team and our worldwide smart community, we'd like to share with you several extraordinary presentations from our 2019 Silver Anniversary National Conference. We hope they will inform your work and inspire your service to SMART. Together, we will embark on our next 25 years of helping individuals and families recover from addiction and find balance and purpose in life. Thank you, everyone. It's, it's really my pleasure to be here. I want to thank Mark and Christy and, and the volunteers, uh, the staff for Smart Recovery, and all the participants here at the conference for making this possible. This is an amazing event. 25 years is an amazing accomplishment, and I'm, I'm proud to be part of it. Um, and it's just wonderful to be in the same room with so many people who have the same goals, both personally and professionally, in moving Smart Recovery forward. So it's my pleasure to be here. And it's also uh, a personal um, honor of mine to be up on stage after, as he put it, that stages of change guy <laughs> who, <laughs> um, from early on in my academic development, I've really kind of glommed on to his work and I really appreciate everything he's done for the field uh, specifically. Um, so it's, I looked at the schedule this morning, I'm like, I'm going on after who? <laughs> Wait, if, nobody told me that. Um, so, I'm going to start off with a little story. Last night, I was actually in, sitting around a fire pit in a beautiful outdoor venue, uh, attending a wedding of a family member in, in, in the Cuyahoga Valley of Northern Ohio, beautiful area. And one of my relatives asked me, so you're doing what tomorrow? Why do you have to get up at dark 30 to go to the airport? And I explained what Smart Recovery was, and I explained what I was doing. And they listened patiently, as relatives do, because they love you, they have to. Um, while I explained all that, their eyes didn't roll back in the back of their head, which was good. But when I was done, my 80-year-old my aunt said, why on earth would you research something like this? And she has a good question. It's a good point. Um, and I told her my story, which was four stints in inpatient treatment for alcohol abuse. Four stints over the course of three years. And each time I went through treatment, and I'm sure people can relate to this, the only option for peer support given during those treatment programs was Alcoholics Anonymous. There were no other options presented. Now this was almost a decade ago, to be fair, um, but it didn't work for me. And I relapsed, and it didn't work for me, and I relapsed, and it didn't work for me, and I relapsed. The fourth time, excuse me, <clears throat> the fourth time, the psychologist I was working with at the time said, have you ever heard of Smart Recovery? Nope. And as soon as I attended my first meeting, it clicked. It resonated with me. The principles of smart recovery are my own principles, and are my, my own personal principles. So I glommed onto it, became a huge fan, attended meetings all the time. Some of the people I've, in the audience I've known since the, my very first meeting. I became a facilitator myself and a huge advocate for smart recovery. And as Christy pointed out, I work in the Veterans Healthcare Administration and I've worked at different VA hospitals around the country, and it's my personal goal to be the Johnny Appleseed of Smart Recovery, starting Smart Recovery meetings in each hospital I go to. And I've been 80% successful so far, and I'm working in the Albany VA, just started last month. We're starting up a meeting there. So I'm really excited. So, why did I look at this? When I was in treatment myself, I, t I was watching people in AA and people in Smart Recovery, I was attending both, and I'm like, what are the differences? What do they have in common, right? And I was interested first in what's called locus of control. Where do I feel the control of my life is? Is it internal or is it external? Right, a higher power, for example, or am I driving my own recovery? That kind of thing. Then that kind of mo uh, shifted into motivation, taking a look at motivation and self-efficacy, the belief that I can actually do this, whatever this is. In this case, it was recovery. So I wanted to take a look at those two factors in both in three groups of people. So, I wanted to take a look at three groups of people. People who attended Alcoholics Anonymous exclusively, people who attended Smart Recovery exclusively, and people who attended both. And to see if there were similarities in the levels of motivation, sorry, I'll stand right here. <laughs> similarities in the levels of motivation and self-efficacy in those three groups. 
All right. The questions I wanted to answer. Um, I was interested in whether the smart recovery levels of motivation in those two variables, motivation and self-efficacy, were higher than Alcohol Alcoholics Anonymous members or vice versa. Um, are those two variables and persons participating in both higher than people attending either AA or smart recovery, right? And are those two variables um, part, and, uh, people participating in both smart recovery and AA higher than levels reported by participating participants only in smart recovery? Make sense? All right. The study had a, had a strong N, which uh, N equals 300, that's 300 participants actually answered. The viable respondents, though, I had to weed out some people, so I had, in the end, 180 folks who could participate in the study. I solicited folks exclusively through online contact, and on the AA side of the house, I only contact, I never contacted people individually, we are respecting anonymity, I contacted the regional directors of the AA chapters, which are online, and that's exactly how I got this information. And I contacted the, the directors, or the, they have media, um, uh, their media outreach folks uh, listed on, on their websites. Those are the people I contacted. Then I asked them if they would distribute the link to my study to their groups, and it was their choice to do so or not. I created a 102 question, um, 102 question questionnaire on SurveyMonkey that I gave the links out to. What I was looking for was anybody, male or female, adults, 18 years or older, a diagnosis uh, of alcohol use disorder, and currently participating in support meetings the way I described. Polysubstance use was expected, as were dual diagnoses, mental health diagnoses, as well as substance use disorders. Neither qualified as exclusions. You could have those and that was fine. The demographics I looked at while maintaining an anonymity were gender, age, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, education level, and race. And um, regarding treatment, what I was looking for was the duration of sobriety, any diagnoses that they have on the mental health side or the substance use side, their treatment history, did they go through inpatient treatment before, how many times, did they go through outpatient treatment before, how many times, what's their peer support participation history, what, and any kind of psychotropic medications they might be on. At least one person in this, at this conference is very familiar with the, the, Eureka, the Eureka, the measure that I used for motivation, because he wrote it. He's the guy, who, there he is in the back waving. He wrote it, um, so it was kind of cool to see his presentation and he mentions his study, in his study he mentions the Eureka. Um, it, ta it maps directly to the stages of change and using a Likert scale, I'm not gonna get into that, that's okay. It's established norms, it's an accepted practice to use this as a measure. Um, these are examples of what the Eureka looks like. It's just some of the questions, just so, for your reference. I won't get too much into that. Now, to measure self-efficacy, I used another um, well-supported measure called the AASE. Um, it has 20 potentially triggering scenarios presented twice. The first measures temptation and the second measures confidence. In other words, if you're in this situation, how tempted would you be to use again? And conversely, that same situation, how confident would you be that you would not use again, right? An example, a piece of it, right there on the screen. So that, these are examples for your reference. All right, so the respondents, out of the 300, 118 actually didn't complete the survey, so they got booted. Two actually, after they did successfully complete the survey, contacted me because I provided my email address and requested to re be removed from the survey. That was fine, leaving 180 folks. All right, and here's the broken down by age group. Look at that. So blue is AA, participants only. Red is smart recovery participants only, and green participate in both only. So see how the, the both kind of tapers off after 50 years old or so? Younger crowd comparatively, right? Not surprising that AA kind of peaked at, uh, peaks at 50 to 69. Um, and there weren't, I think there was one respondent over 80 years old, so that's not a surprise either. But the interesting thing was, across the board, in the first three, two age groups, 
I had the same number of respondents in all three categories. I find that just coincidentally weird. By race, anybody notice anything conspicuous? Wow. Yeah. Predominantly Caucasian, right? Across the board. And this was interesting because when I contacted, for example, the way that I contacted smart recovery participants was through the, the, mailing, the, the mailing list, through home office. That gets distributed across um, all participants in smart recovery facilitators. Um, in AA, like I said, I contacted the regional directors of New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, big cities, Denver, and then rural areas as well, and yet predominantly Caucasian. Gender, more males in AA. Um, oops, blue is AA, sorry. Now, for the AA only group, people who only attend AA, there were 89 people in the survey. A little over half were female. 37% um, hold an undergrad degree, education-wise. 48% had no history of treatment, almost half. And 17% had three or more residential treatment programs in their history. Uh, treat, residential treatment and 8% had, 8 had IOP programs, intensive outpatient programs. For smart recovery attendants only, 61% were male, 41% held a grad degree, graduate degree, 68% um, had no in history of alcohol treatment. That's kind of interesting um, in itself. 3% three, three or more residential treatments programs and 3% three, three or more IOP programs. Now I didn't break down if they were the same 3%. Um, I didn't go into that level of statistical analysis um, for brevity. Now, the people who attended both, AA support meetings and smart recovery, 65% were male, 40% hold a grad degree, 20% had no history of treatment, and then 15 and 15%. 15 For the, any statistics geeks in the audience? Good, let's move on. <laughs> All right. So, when I say the phrase statistically significant, that means just something to look at. That's something that's of interest to us as we're looking at the results of this study. So, interestingly enough, when I took a look at the motivation, levels between AA only and smart recovery only attendees, the motivation levels were, weren't really that different from each other, and they were high, which is good, right? And it's really not a surprise, and I'll, gi I'll give away one of the, the limitations of the study right now, that um, people are going to be, people in who attend meetings, either one, they're going to have some level of motivation regardless because they're attending meetings, they're doing something, right? That indicates some base level of motivation. But this was pretty high for both, for both groups, which I found kind of promising. Not much difference in confidence between both groups. So again, high levels, but not much difference. More stats, well, let's skip for that. In a nutshell, participants in Smart Recovery and AA ex report similar levels of motivation, high levels, but similar. Participants in both peer support groups report higher levels of motivation than those attending only one exclusively. I want to say that over again. People who attended both AA and Smart Recovery reported significantly higher levels of motivation than people who attended only one or the other. This is the significant finding. We'll talk more about that in a second. Self-efficacy was moderately high, though not really different between all three groups. So the belief that I could do this, that I could work on my recovery and be successful in it, was pretty equal between people who were in AA, smart recovery, or attended both. The level of motivation, that was the key difference. People were more highly motivated if they attended both. Now again, a limitation, and I'm cutting to the quick here, is that, well, that makes sense too. It seems to be commonsensical that people who want to succeed in their recovery would, it, would draw support from as many sources as they can. That's true. And that's the significant part that we're going to talk about when it comes to clinical treatment here in a minute. All right. So some, com some discussion comments. Um, smart recoveries, as we know, self-empowerment based in recovery, and offers concrete skills to handle urges, cravings, triggers, the, the four points, as we know. This can be very, very appealing to, to some people in recovery, as we know. Um, and that's not really the focus of AA. 
AA focuses more on the fellowship, the 12 steps, the working the program. Um, so AA provides a different set of skills for the same purpose and adds the religious slash spiritual component as well. Um, these results suggest that the persons who seek elements to both programs, self-empowerment accompanied by spirituality, for example, may feel more highly motivated to sustain their recovery and draw from both. So if I, and I've met, I've met people like this in recovery and treatment. I have treated people who, who have said this to me, where they are spiritual, they do have a spiritual or religious component, and they draw support in their recovery from AA. But then they're, they're, they're kind of self-directed as well. And smart recovery is appealing to them too because it's a very concrete set of skills that we work on in the groups and meetings. All right. So sampling was a little off as we saw in the numbers for all three study groups. If I were to expand this study, I'd want to, I'd want to stabilize that and become a little more um, stratified across all three groups. Motivation can vary, this is very important. Motivation levels in human beings can vary depending on what we're talking about. I may be highly motivated in my recovery from alcohol, but not really working on my diet. Not really motivated, right, in that area. Not really motivated at work, but strongly motivated in my recovery. Different domains can have different levels of motivation. Um, I mentioned the racial component being different. I got a few minutes left. Oh, one thing, the very last point. This is not a causational study. This is a correlational study. I was just taking a look at these three groups, these two variables, to see what it looked like. That's all. This does not imply that attending AA and Smart Recovery will, prompt, will guarantee you build your motivation levels higher. Now, that being said, my personal experience and hearing testimony from people I, I treat, being in a group of highly motivated people, what, do you think, what impact do you think has, that has on your motivation for most people, right? If I'm around a group of go-getters, that's going to bleed over into my attitude, usually, right? So, that's one thing to think of. The, um, the, the levels of Caucasian respondents versus African American or blacks, this is actually representative demographically of AA nationally. So that wasn't a surprise. They actually collect dem dem demographic information and, and race is one of them. So this was actually representative of the actual AA population out there. I was really surprised to hear that. We don't really track this kind of demographic in smart recovery, so no worries there. All right. I'm not going to talk about that. I ran into a hiccup regarding AA. I ran into people telling me that it violated, my survey violated anonymity by just asking the questions. And then I had other groups say, yeah, we'll, we'll help you out because it, we're supposed to AA, one of the traditions to help out uh, research. So they were okay with it. And I, I actually had some pretty heated emails headed my way um, describing things that are probably anatomically impossible that I should do with my survey. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, yeah, that was, that was a fun day. But uh, so there was, there, was a, there was a misconception on behalf of whoever I was communicating with regardless, uh, regarding what they thought was appropriate participation versus inappropriate participation. Now, when it comes to, I mentioned this, and I think I have one minute. Um, when it comes to um, clinical application, again, as I said, my personal experience was going through treatment programs that only offered AA. In the VA healthcare system, the system in which I work currently and for the past six years now, um, historically, and not through any malice, um, AA has often been the number one go-to when we refer people to, to peer support. This study actually has helped, um, excuse me, <clears throat> drying out. This study has actually helped uh, place smart recovery meetings in VA hospitals. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, this study actually... <laughs> This study has actually been the, the proof that I needed to go to the boards of the VA hospitals and justify, I'm choking up, justify actually starting a smart recovery meeting in these hospitals. So it was a tiny study. It wasn't you know, globally significant, but locally very significant. Um, and this is something that I, I hope to continue as I, like I said, play Johnny Appleseed and install smart recovery meetings. So thank you for your time. Again, any questions? If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to Smart Recovery's YouTube channel 
And don't forget to click the notifications tab to receive automatic updates every time we add new recovery-related content to our channel.